Social media is a big part of SEO because everybody uses social media. Even if all you have is a LinkedIn page, even if all you do is share your photos on Tumblr, you still use social media and you're still influenced by it. Social media is a great way for customers and brands to interact. <coughs> Specifically for brands to interact with customers, you know, whether they have complaints or whether they have good things to say about it. It's a good way to keep on top of how people are talking about your brand. This was a tweet from a flyer who was flying on JetBlue. He was a little perturbed that, you know, his flight was delayed and he was complaining. He was sitting in the airport. And then within the hour, you know, JetBlue responded and said, hey, tell me your flight number. We'll give you an update. He tells him his flight number. He gets an update. This is excellent customer service. It all happens while he's sitting in the airport, right? So it alleviates some of that frustration. And the situation didn't change. You know, the circumstances didn't change. But this guy is probably a little, le little less pissed off because he got a response from the company. Sometimes even negative social media can be good for SEO. I don't know if any of you have heard of recently in the news there was some interesting things being said about Urban Outfitters. They created a piece of clothing that was disrespectful to the Kent State victims. They issued this apology on Twitter, and the response they got to this apology was very negative, and people are giving them a lot of flack for not being very sincere, for being very insensitive, things of that nature. This isn't very good press. But look what happened inside of Google. People did a Google search for Urban Outfitters. The search has doubled overnight, basically. And people did a search for Urban Outfitters twice as much as they normally would have for an entire week. Maybe, maybe they're getting bad press for doing something insensitive, but it actually kind of helps with their SEO because their organic traffic went up. Their organic interest went up. A lot of people did more searches about them. Social media and SEO are not related. That is completely untrue. Um, the way that people talk about your brand is, ex is very important to SEO. The user experience. How users actually interact with your website, it can send good and bad signals to search engines. Some things to consider is how long do they stay there? How many pages do they visit? What elements on the pages are they interacting with? Are they clicking on links? You know, how much time do they spend on each page? Or are they just clicking through and not really retaining any information? These are all signals that we consider part of the user experience, and we want to make sure that anyone we bring to the site has a positive user experience. Mobility is a must. Consumers are consistently using multiple devices to complete their online tasks. In a study that was done very recently, 90% of the activity that people were doing were do done on multiple screens. And it's not just for shopping. People are doing the, browsing the internet, people are doing social networking, shopping, searching for info. They're doing all of these different, different tasks and they're doing it on multiple devices, typically within the same day. So you have to make sure that, that the mobile experience is a positive one and that people can jump from one device to another easily. So SEO myth, it has nothing to do with usability. How people are able to use your site enhances the user experience, directly affects your SEO. All right, so your brand awareness on the internet is also a really important part of how well your website will do. If people know your name, they're more likely to visit your website. Messaging for your brand should be clear and uniform so that when people hear either your brand mentioned or a product that you offer mentioned, they think of your brand. You want to make sure people are making those connections. And here again, associate what your brand is, what it does, what it offers, and what are the benefits of your brand over others. This is the brand that everybody knows. It doesn't even need any words. Right? Everybody knows that this is the Nike swoosh. And if I do a search for something like toddler tennis shoes, which is actually searched a thousand times a month, surprisingly, Nike doesn't show up until option number seven. But if I'm a fan of Nike, I'm going to scroll down to find Nike, not to mention all the other things on this page. Right? They've got these pictures here. So these are Google shopping campaigns. So I already know that they're totally adorable. Plus, in this ad space, Nike has this ad, and it's probably targeting toddler tennis shoes, right? So now I know, OK, Nike sells them. Look how cute they are. And they're probably on sale. So I'm going to go to Nike. Now let's look at some of their display advertising. 
if we're trying to make sure that we associate our brand with our product offerings. Okay, so that first one over there is a clothing line. This could be any sport, but it's also sport related. It's very impactful because it's simple and it's to the point. And then, of course, we have the golf ad, right? So all three of these things are sports related. And then on the product side, now I know that they sell clothing. And what's the benefit of Nike clothing? I can have clothing that has my favorite team on it, right? What's the benefit of buying, buying golf shoes from Nike? I can find them at Dick's Sporting Goods, right? So all of these things are connected to connect this brand with what their products are and why it benefits you. So USA Today is one of the top news sources online. If you do search for anything that is recent news, USA Today will show up on the first page. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how they do their branding. And I found these series of ads on the internet that they do, and it's very simple, more. And they have different iterations of this ad. And the first one is just a rolled up newspaper, which is kind of ingenious. And then of course they have the basketball, and they have the magnifying glass, all of these things are related to their product, which is the news. It's, it's up-to-date news, it's interesting news, it's the news that you want more of. And it's just that word, more. And then of course, you know, they change out the O, but then they have this little blue dot, and that's all you need, is that little blue dot to know that it's USA Today. It's a very effective campaign. So now I want to talk a little bit more in depth about your digital advertising and how it can affect your SEO. So effective PPC can start associating the keywords to your brand name. If I do a search for Tudor, these are the first three ads come up, right? And already I can see Varsity Tutors and Wizant, if that's how you say it. And these are two companies I didn't know about before. And these are just ads, and maybe I click on them, maybe I don't. But now I know about these two companies, and I start connecting Tudor to Varsity Tutors and I start connecting that keyword to these companies. So if you have an effective PPC campaign, you'll start showing up in these results. You know, even if people don't click on you, they're starting to make that relationship. Display ad campaigns can do the same thing. The types of companies that consistently do this well are fast food companies, right? So in all of these ads, I can clearly see the brand and I can clearly see the product. There's this direct correlation between this is what you can get here and this is our brand, remember it. This visual sort of connection between the product and the brand also helps with your authority on the web. Social media campaigns can get people talking about your brand. Qdoba did this really awesome social media campaign where this was on Facebook and Twitter. They had people voting for which cheese dip they should have in their stores. First of all, people had to go to their stores to try the cheese dip in order to vote. But then they could go online and they could vote, and you know all of these were taken in real time, so as soon as I put my vote in, I could see the numbers go up. <coughs> it's a very effective way to do your marketing, to get people interested not only in your brand, but also in the products that you have to offer and making decisions for your store. Email campaigns are also very effective. Emails are a good way to remind people about your brand and what kind of things your brand offers. One of my favorite SEO myths is that clicks from ads will improve your organic traffic. There is no direct correlation between the number of clicks your ad gets to the number of traffic your website gets. All right, so the analytics piece is sort of, I mean, no matter how much of this or how little of this you do, you're always gonna need analytics. <coughs> analytics is imperative to understanding your online presence and developing high-level SEO strategies. If you don't understand what's going on in the internet, if you can't read what people are doing, then you can't have an effective campaign. Let's start with something a little simpler. So if I set up Google Analytics, and I have the tracking code on my site, and I set up the monthly report, this is typically the report I'm going to get. Right? So this report shows me how many users came, how many sessions there were, session duration, bounce rate, page views, who cares? This is not very informative. I want to know what those users did when they got there. I want to know where those users came from. I want to know after they got there, what did they do? Where did they go? How did they interact with the website? So let's go back through our list of the things that influence SEO. The link profile, okay? Webmaster tools will tell you 
how many links you have to your site, and who links the most. They'll tell you what your most linked content is. This is really vital important in information if you're trying to build up your SEO. If you're trying to look at social media, you can see which network people are using to get to your site. And then you can go even further and see which pages on your website people are actually sharing with others. User experience. We talked a lot about how mobile is important for the user experience. So you can see the difference in your mobile traffic versus your desktop. How much better or worse are you doing? Are there a lot of people dropping off on mobile devices? These are things that are important to know so that you can improve that experience. Brand awareness. There are tools you can use to find how many times a month are people searching for my brand? And then what are the keywords that they're relating to my brand? And how can I change that or how can I improve that? Digital advertising. You know, if I'm running a PPC campaign, which of my ads has the best click-through rate? Which one has the lowest cost per click? Which one has the best position on the page? These are all good things to think about when you continue your campaigns so that you bring in the right kind of traffic that's going to convert and buy your product or your service. And then when you go even further, you can see inside of those campaigns, which are the keywords that are performing the best. Another important thing to think about when we're talking about analytics is what are my competitors doing? I, I want to know where I'm missing the mark when I compare myself to my competitors. Where are they placing their ads? How much money are they spending? How many clicks are they getting? And why are they getting more or less? And how can I be competitive there? So to wrap it up, to make search engines work for you, first you have to build a strong foundation. And those are those basic SEO direct signals that we talked about in the beginning. And then you have to coordinate your online efforts. That means improving all of these things, improving your link profile, improving your social media, improving the user experience, getting your brand out there, and then use digital advertising in the best way possible. And then, of course, you have to use analytics to make sense of it all and really design a comprehensive strategy.